Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase it immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from the book. If you're interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number one through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 178. Please turn to it. Page number 178, the very first problem that you see on the page, number 182. The problem is already on the blackboard. Here is what we are told. We are told that we bought we bought 60 cameras for resale. We are going, we're going to resell them, 60 of them. We are told that out of the 60 that we bought for resale, we were unable to sell 6 of them. 6 were not sold. Those 6 that were not sold were returned. We returned the unsold, unsold one for 50% of the cost. The wholesaler gave us 50% of the credit, not the whole credit. The rest of them, 54 of them, were sold for $250 each, which we are told represents the price which, which includes a 20% markup. The question simply is, the question simply is, approximate profit or loss, what we want to find out is the approximate profit or loss, we don't know whether we're going to make a profit or a loss, as a percentage, as a percentage of false, what is that? Let's find out, shall we? Let's get going. So first thing first, we know that we sold that for $250, which includes a 20% markup. So the price that we're selling it for, the price that we're selling it for, which is $250, we are told, it includes the cost, the actual cost, plus a 20% markup, a 20% markup is the fifth of the cost, a fifth of the cost, which which represents the twenty. This represents the twenty percent markup. Let's see what we can do here. Let's solve for c in this equation here. So this is going to give us six fifths c equals two hundred and fifty, which means c equals two hundred and fifty times five. Two hundred and fifty times five over six. Two hundred and fifty times five over six. I'm going to write this a little bit lower, or perhaps we can do it over here. 250 times 5 over 6. Okay, watch what happens. Now the key, the key, the key thing to keep in mind here, the most important thing to keep in mind here is that whenever they go out of their way to say approximate, well even if they don't say approximate, we know we approximate all the time, but particularly when they use the word approximate themselves, that's their way of saying that if you are hell-bent on doing the exact calculation, it will be a nightmare. It will be a bloody nightmare. We're not going to do that obviously. Let's see what we can do. How many, how many 6 in a 25? 25 has 4 6's. 25 has 4 6's. The remaining one goes and joins the 10. Uh, the remaining one goes and joins the 0, becomes a 10. How many 6 in a 10? 10 has, 10 has 1 6. We have a remainder of 4, which is being divided by 6. So it's 41 and 4, 4 6 times 5. 41 and 4 6 times 5, which of course is the same as 41 and 2 3rd times 5. We're not going to use 41 and 2 thirds. We're going to approximate that as 42. 42 times 5 is a nice round number. 40 times 5 is 200 plus 10 is 210. So the cost is approximately $210. Cost is approximately $210. Let's begin our process then. And we sold 54 of them. We sold, we sold 54 of them. Why 54? Because 6 were not sold. We were told that 6 were not sold. We sold 54 of them at a price of 250 each. At a price of 250 each. But we've just found out that the cost is, is 210. Then the profit per unit, profit per unit was $40. $40 because cost is 210. We are selling it for 250. The difference of $40 is our profit per unit. That does not mean that we made an overall profit because we had to return some at a loss. We'll get to that in a second. So 54 times the profit per unit 
times 40, 54 times 40, which is the profit per unit. This is 0, 4 times 4, 4 times 4 is 16, 6 carry 1, 4 times 5 is 20, plus 1 is 21. So this is our, this is our gross profit, gross profit. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that we know our cost is 200. When we return them, when we return them, we get 50%. We get 50% back, back from the wholesaler. The wholesaler does not give us credit for entire $210. It's going to give us a credit for 50% of that. 50%, 50 of 210 Again, I'm going to pretend that it is about $100. Keep it simple. Do you understand? It's, it's 105 I know that. 50%, which means we lost $100. We lost approximately $100 on six of the units that we, were, that, we, we had, that we had to return. Six that we had to return, the cost is $210, but we only got credit for $105, which we're going to pretend is $100, which means we, we lost $600. So we have to subtract that $600 from this amount that we came here, $600, which is our loss, which is our loss on the unsold unit. Which is our loss on six unsold units. And this is our net profit. As we can clearly see, we have a profit. 60, 11 minus 6 is 5. We made a $1,560 of net profit. What are we going to do with this information? We made a net profit of... Well, this is not actually net profit. This is net... Uh, this is our net profit because we made a profit of $40 per unit. One more time. We made a profit of $40 per unit because we are selling them for $250 each. We are buying them for $210. A difference of $4 is the profit per unit, which is $40. We sold 54 of them. This is what we got. $600 we, got, we, we had to take a hit because we were, we were unable to sell six of them. This is our profit, $15.60. Let's look at the answer choices. Because the question was, if you recall, the question was approximately profit or loss is what percentage of the cost? In other words, answer choices are going to include positive number and negative number. Ne negative number represents a loss. Obviously, we did not make a loss. We made a profit. It's right here. We made a profit of 1560. So any answer choice that shows a loss is the wrong answer. Let's see what the answer choice are. Answer choice A says a loss. That's not good. Answer choice A says a loss, a loss of 7%. That's not what we have. Answer choice B also says a loss. Answer choice B also says a loss. Answer choice C says that it is less than 10%. Now watch what happens. I need room. I need a lot of room. Give me one second before I erase it. I'll give you unobstructed view. Now the question is, our profit or loss, which we know now, which we know is the profit, is what percentage? So we don't have to worry about the loss. The profit is what percentage of the cost? The profit is what percentage of the cost, which we're going to do on the top. The question, the answer that we have to question that we have answer now is our profit, our profit is what percent of cost? In order, for us to answer, in order for us to be able to answer that question, we have to figure out the cost. The cost is right here, $210 per unit. Our cost is $210 per unit times 60, because we bought 60 of them. So that's two zeros. 6 times 1 is 6, and 6 times 2 is 12. Our cost is $12,600. Keep listening. $12,600. Our profit is... Our profit is 1560. We know I need room. We know we know 10% of 
12,600 is, is 1,260. Of course, as I always remind you, this is by design. Do you understand? I do know better. This is by design. I go at a very leisurely pace on purpose. We are not in a hurry. We are here to learn. But in the exam, you don't have that luxury. Do you understand? I'm fully cognizant of it. And of course, in the real exam, we don't take a, take so long to explain everything to ourselves in a nitty gritty way like we, like we do here. But anyway, here's the point. This amount represents 10% of the cost. This amount represents 10% of the cost. Our profit is 1560. Our profit, our profit is equal to 1560, which is greater than 10% of. 12,600. 12, we made a profit of more than 10%. Is there any other choice that says less than 10%? C, I have it on the blackboard already, but I do not. C says 7%. We did not make a 7% profit. We made a, we made a profit a hell of a lot more than 10%. You understand? The answer choice has to be either D. Answer choice has to be either D or E. We do not know. Now, what does E say? E says 15%. I'm going to work with E. I'm going to work with E only because I like 15%. I like 15% a lot because 15% is very easy to figure out. And we're going to do that here. Okay, watch. We're going to do that right here. 15% of 15% of this amount, our cost, 12,600. Watch what happens. 10%, we already know, 10%, 10% is 1260. 10% is 1260. This is 10%. And half of that is 630, which is 5%. We can stop right there. In the, real, real, in the real exam, we don't actually do everything out. We can stop right here. That is 1,800. That's almost 1,900. We did, make, we did not make a 1,900 profit. We, need a, we made a profit of 1,500. We did not make a 15% profit. This is almost $1,900. This is almost $1,900. We did not make a profit of $1,900. This is 12 plus 6 is 18 plus another one is 19. We only have a profit of $1,560. The answer is D. The answer is D. That's all. Let's move on then to the next one, number 183. Number 183. I'm going to get out of frame just for one second. I'll be right back. I'm not going anywhere. Okay, we're going to go to the next one. Yes. Okay. Number 183. Number 183 is an interesting question. An interesting question is a good question, of course, they are fun. 183. We are told that we have seven pieces. We have seven pieces. We are told that the average length is 68 centimeters. We are also told that the median length, median length of these pieces is 84 centimeters. We are also told that the longest piece that we have, the longest piece that we have, we are told is. If the length of the longest piece, if the length of the longest piece is 14 centimeter more than the four times the shortest piece, the length of the longest piece is 14 more than four times the shortest. So if you're going to represent the longest with the letter L, L equals 14 plus four times S. That's our equation. I don't know why I put a parenthesis around L. L equals 14 times S. That's what, that's what we are told. The longest piece is whatever 4 times the shortest piece is plus 14 more inches. Let's see what exactly what they're looking for. They're looking for the maximum possible length of the longest piece. Maximum possible length of the longest piece. Well, let's see what we can do. Oh, 
Well, should I write everything down or should I just explain to you? Listen, if we want the longest piece to be as long as possible, if we want the longest piece to be as long as possible, because we want the maximum, that implies that we must keep all the other ones as short as possible. That implies that we must minimize, we must minimize the length of all the other six, because there are seven of them. We want the length of the other six to be as short as possible, the shortest possible pieces that we can find, because we want one piece, the longest piece, to be longest possible under these constraints. The constraints are very simple. One constraint is that the average has to be 68 centimeter, the median has to be 84 centimeter, and the longest piece has to be of such a nature that it's got to be four times the shortest piece plus the 14. Let's see what we can do. We can arrange. We're going to arrange our pieces in order from the long, from the shortest, from the shortest, all the way to the longest in terms of length. So shortest one, of course, is S here. That's our shortest. Then comes the next one. Let's call it N2 because it's the second piece. Then we have N3, which because that's the third piece. The median has to be 84. And since there are seven pieces, since there are seven pieces, which is an odd number which means the median of the seven pieces is actually the fourth one. It has to fall right in the middle. Then we have our N5. N5. Then we have N6. And finally the longest one. This is our median. Now, ask ourselves this question. We have to ask ourselves this question. What is the minimum possible value these two can take? The minimum possible value the second piece and the third piece can be, they cannot be second piece and the third piece cannot be any shorter than the shortest piece. But there is nothing there to prevent us from making them as equal to, as long as the short piece. It is quite possible for us to make the N2, the second piece and the third piece because we want them to be as short as possible the shortest possible value, shortest possible length, shortest possible length for N2 and N3 is S. In other words, what we have here is S, 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 84, N5, N6 and L. Okay? We're going to have to continue this story on the top because we are running out of room. Let's pick up on the top. Remember, the median has to, or oh, median we took care of, median is right here, we took care of that. Remember, the average has to be 64 and we have to meet this constraint. Let's, let's put this constraint over here. L has to be 4 times S plus 14, so we don't forget. We have to satisfy this condition. We also have to satisfy that the average has to be average has to be 68. Well, when they tell you that the average is 68, the constraint that they're putting is the total length of all the seven pieces together. Because if there are seven of them, and if their average needs to be 68, what they're telling us is that the total needs to be seven times this amount. Let's find out. Eight, seven sevens are 49. 49 plus seven is 50. 50 plus six is 56. So it's six plus the five, uh, and a five. 6, 7 is 42, 42 plus 5 is 47. So it looks like the total is 476 centimeter, unless I made a mistake. We'll find out. If I made a boo-boo, we'll find out in later on. Let's, car let's carry on, okay? I'm taking too long. I'm taking way too long. It's one thing to go at a leisurely pace. It's another thing to go at a, at a uh, snail's pace. Let's continue. So we have S, 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 then we have the median, then we have N5, and then N6, and then finally the longest. Now we ask the same question here, not the opposite, but rather the same question here. What are the, sh what are the shortest possible values? 
four and five and, and six. The fifth piece and the sixth piece, fifth, fifth and the sixth piece cannot be shorter than the median. Median falls right in the middle. This is the median. This is the median. The shortest possible value, the shortest possible length for N5 and N6 is 84. It is quite possible for the, for, for the fifth piece and the sixth piece to the same length as the median. Why not? That is the shortest one. They cannot go any shorter than that. Because that guy has to sit in the fourth spot. Let's continue. We are almost there. That's it, we are almost there. So we're going to put it in here. So we get S, 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 84, and then N5. Right here, N5 is going to be 84. N6 is going to be 84. And then finally the longest piece, which is right here. 4S plus 14. We are done guys, we are done. Now I'm going to change the color purely for the flair of the dramatics. So here are the sum, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. And that total has to be this guy right here, 476. We are done. We just have to solve this thing for S. And the rest is downhill. I forget what the question was asking. Was the question asking for the length of the shortest piece, or were they looking for? Oh, they were looking for the length of the. They were looking for the longest possible length that we can have for the longest longest piece. So they're looking for L, not the S. It doesn't matter. Once we have the S, we put it in there and find the L. Let's do it, shall we? Now this is just a simple simple linear equation, and that's all there is. So we have S plus S plus S. That's three S plus four S. We have seven S's plus 1, 2, 3, 3 times 84, plus a 14, don't forget the 14, plus a 14, has to equal 476, 476. We need the room obviously, so we need to raise all of this thing. Give me one more quick break before I raise the rest of it. The rest is of course very simple. Three times eighty-four. Three times eighty is two forty plus twelve. Two forty plus twelve is going to be two fifty. Two fifty-two. So this amount is going to be minus two fifty-two, which is going to be four two two and minus the fourteen. Oh, what do you know? Aren't they nice? Aren't they nice? By the time you subtract this amount, which is right here, and by the time you subtract this amount, you end up with two hundred and ten. That represents seven s's. Aren't they nice? The shortest possible value is 30. If the shortest possible value is 30, then the longest possible value that we can have is right here, which is 4 times 30 plus a 14. 4 times 30 is 120 plus a 14. 120 plus 14, 120, 130, 134. The longest possible piece that we can have is 134 and I hope and pray to God that that is one of the answer choices. 134 is answer choice D. Because it's very easy to make a boo-boo in a question like this which is why you have to pay attention. And it requires even more attention, it requires even, it requires a far greater concentration when you have to babble at the same time like I have to do here. If you just have to do it by yourself silently then you can concentrate. But when I have to keep talking I have to make sure that I don't make a boo -boo. do you understand? That's it, 134 is the answer, answer choice D. Let's do the next one, 184. 184 which is the very last one in the column, let's get that out of the way too. But first I'm going to give you the un unobstructed view. One hundred and eighty four says Lois has Lois says X more dollars than does 
Jim, all right. Good followers together. They have wide others. The question is how much does Jim have? Now listen, this is a very straightforward, very simple question, but it is an algebra question, and just like any other algebra questions, we always have two choices when we get to the algebra problem in the exam. Two choices are either we can solve it algebraically in a classical way, in traditional, orthodox, academic way, or we can plug in numbers. It's a very simple problem. We can do it either way. For example, for example, if we if we represent L for Lewis, we know that Lewis has x dollars more than the amount that Jim has. If we represent j for the amount of dollars that Jim has, then Lewis has the amount of dollars that Jim, Jim has plus x more dollars. So it has x more dollars. That's our first equation. But we also know that together, together they have y dollars, which means Lewis plus Jim has to equal y. And the question simply is, how much does Jim have? We, we want to solve for j. Well, let's, let's put this equation in here. L we know is j plus x. L we know is j plus x. j plus x plus j equals y. We are almost done. It's very simple. And we are interested in solving for j. So 2j equals y minus x, and therefore j equals y minus x over 2. That's our answer. y minus x over 2. That's it. We're done. Another way to solve the same problem, as I said before, another way to solve the same problem, instead of doing it algebraically, which is actually not a very bad algebra, it's not a very nasty algebra, it's a very simple, straightforward algebra, but another way to solve this problem is to just plug in numbers, just make up some numbers. For example, for example, we're going to put, we can pretend that Lois has ten, we, we can pretend that Lois has ten dollars. Lois has Lois has Lois has X dollars more than Jim. Let's make a number for Jim. Let's pretend Jim has seven dollars. And which is and Lois has ten dollars. Lois has so what we what we are saying here is that Lois has ten dollars, which is three more dollars than than the amount of money that Jim has, which is seven dollars. One more time, Lois has ten dollars, which is three more than the amount of money that Jim has. The question is how much does Jim have? Jim has seven. Now all you do is all we do is we go through the answer choices wherever we see L, wherever we see. Oh, actually, we're not going to see L, we're not going to see J in the answer choices. The answer choices are going to have X and J, because those were our creation. Whatever we see X, we replace it with 3. Whatever we see Y, we replace with the amount that we come up with. Together, they have Y dollars. Well, if you're going to pretend, if you're going to pretend that Lois has $10, and if you're going to pretend that Jim has $7, then Y is going to be 17. Because together, they have $17. Lois has $10, Jim has $7, which is why Lois has 3 more dollars than Jim does. Wherever we see x, we replace with 3. Wherever we see y, we replace with 17 the answer choices. And we keep on going until we get the answer that gives us 7. 7 is our punchline. 7 is our punchline. And as you can see here, this one tells us y minus x. y is 17. 17 minus, 17 minus x, which is 3 over 2. 17 minus 3 is 14. 14 over 2 is 7, which is what we are looking for, which is what we are looking for. Jim has $7. This is Jim. Question was, how much money does Jim have? Jim has $7. That's what we are looking for. That's, that's what we refer to as our punchline. And this is our punchline. And that's answer choice A. Now, if you go through all the other answer choices, if you go through all the other answer choices and replace the X and the Y by, the, by their respective value, replace y by 17 and replace x by 3 when you go through all the answer choices you will see that no other answer choice no other answer choice is going to work out to be 7 the answer is 7 answer choice is a i'll see you tomorrow okay i know